Great, welcome. Okay, good evening and welcome. Welcome everyone. Hello, thank you for being here. So if you are comfortable reaching over to your chat and wish to make that part of your interaction, we'd be so curious to hear what brought you here tonight or whether you have some hopes for what you might get out of tonight. Those are our welcome comments in the chat to get us started. And I do wanna thank you for choosing to be here. I know you could have been anywhere, especially with the capacities of the internet and our televisions and media, but you chose to be here. And so our intention is to give you both some practical knowledge as well as create an experience of the three most powerful ways that you can change in little ways to make your rest and your digest better right here tonight. So we're glad that you're joining us for this workshop. But first, let us tell us, we'll tell you who we are and why you can trust us with this subject. I'm so glad to introduce Allison T. Brill on the other screen here. Allison is a public health and inclusion specialist, a certified health and wellness coach, and the founder of Allison T. Brill Coaching. Her work in public health, mental wellness, and equity work combine her passion for building health and thriving communities. And her experience and expertise in advancing the health equity and social justice is um, not only a passion, but really how she makes a mark in the world. So this is uh, an honor to teach with her. Her work is rooted in this notion of um, reaching everybody in a way that, that, is, that makes sense. And she lives her what she preaches here. You'll hear some things that um, she does actually live by, so. <laughs> Thank you so much, Olga, for that. Um... A uh, lovely introduction, and I am so pleased to uh, introduce Olga Schwa, founder of Olga Schwa Bodywork Wellness. Olga has over 20 years of experience helping everyday people feel better in their bodies. These days, she also helps aspiring therapists pass their licensure exam and succeed in business by providing them with the tools for optimal self-care uh, to build their businesses sustainably. And we are both delighted to be here this evening. Thank you all for joining us. Looks like a quiet group. Nobody's popping in the chat, but at any moment, that's welcome to you. And I think we'll move into uh, our first key to rest and digest is an understanding of the connection, the sleep gut connection. Why did we put these two words together and how to make better food choices? The second key, which we'll follow with, is more about sleep hygiene, prioritizing sleep, and we'll do some techniques and movement at that point. And then we'll get to the third and maybe the most important point. So you'll have to stay to the end to find that out. All right, and we'd love to hear from you, you know, what, what brought you here this evening? If anyone wants to, would like to share, if there's something specific you're interested in learning more about or specific um, health concern you're having related to sleep or digestion, um, we'd love to hear anything or just want to say hello in the chat. Um, yeah, but thank you for being here and for investing in your health. Um, so let's let's dive right in. If you're like most people, good sleep is hard to come by. Um, according to the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, one in three ad adults in the U.S. report not getting enough sleep for optimal health. I imagine the other two-thirds were probably too tired to take the survey. That's just what I think. Um, and there's a long list of real and valid reasons why at least a third of us struggle with sleep. An extended raging pandemic, for instance, uh, racism, sexism, homophobia, chronic pain, financial stress, job stress, and people to care for, just to name a few. So getting consistent, good quality sleep is essential for our gut health, our immunity, and our overall health. Um, and there's a lot of effects that, that happen to the body um, when we don't get enough consistent uh, quality sleep. Um, sleep is really when the body repairs and restores. And almost half of adults in the US say they feel sleepy between, during the day between three and seven days per week, right? That's a lot. 35% um, of folks report sleeping on average less than seven hours per night. 
research does actually recommend that adults sleep at least seven, ideally eight hours a night to promote optimal health and well-being. And kids need more between nine to 11 hours, depending on age. And of course, everyone is different and not everyone needs seven or eight hours, but most of us um, thrive and we're at our best when we get at least seven, if not eight hours of sleep. Um, there are lots of effects, right? When we don't get enough uh, good quality sleep, there's immediate effects like lack of alertness, impaired memory, um, stress in relationships, right? We might be more irritable or anxious, just more might snap easier, um, quicker, you know, at people. If we're tired, we can have mood swings, you know, we can go from being, you know, happy to sad to um, anxious and all kinds of every emotion in between uh, can go back and forth more often. Um, there's a, obviously there's a greater likelihood for um, car crashes when we're sleepy. And then when we talk about long-term uh, poor sleep, that's sleeping less than seven hours per day on a regular basis. And this can lead to a host of chronic physical and mental health, con uh, mental health conditions, such as um, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attack, heart failure, stroke, depression, anxiety, um, weight gain, even lower immunity, lower sex drive, and even wrinkles can be tied to lack of, um, of quality sleep on a long-term uh, basis. Um, all right, so um, how well your digestive system functions is directly correlated to how well you're sleeping at night. Here's the sleep gut connection. When you have poor sleep, you have poor digestion and immune function. I don't know if anyone has noticed this, um, feel free to share any experiences that you feel comfortable sharing in the chat. For me, I notice when I get even an hour less sleep than I need, I can feel it in my gut the next day. I don't know if that happens to any of you. I feel like my gut health is just off the next day. I mean, if constipation, diarrhea, bloating, all of that can, is directly tied to sleep. Um, the lack of sleep increases stress on the body, which, in, which affects the gut. So when you don't get enough sleep, your hormones can become unbalanced and the stress hormone cortisol can rise. And then when the cortisol levels rise, it slows our metabolism, um, it impacts our hunger cues and, um, and triggers an increase in hunger pangs and cravings. So that might be something you've noticed too. I certainly noticed that when I don't get enough sleep, I'm extra hungry and you might reach for um, foods that give us a uh, quick energy that are, you know, like sugary type foods or other processed foods, maybe foods we don't, we wouldn't normally eat if we weren't um, hungry and sleep deprived, right? Um, so it's when those, those hormones um, that control hunger get out of balance, that's what increases those um, cravings for sugar and quick energy. Um, and then chronic exposure to this cortisol can cause indigestion, food sensitivities and changes to our delicate gut bacteria balance. So lots of connections there between sleep and digestion. Um, here are some, some, so all of the foods listed here can increase inflammation and alter gut bacteria eaten in large amounts, right? And here I wanted to share some foods that are helpful to avoid before bed. And there's reasons for, for all of these. Um, caffeine, right, and chocolate are both stimulants. Um, uh, caffeine actually has a half-life of five hours, which means that around half of the caffeine consumed will be eliminated from the body in five hours, right? So if you're a coffee drinker, that's, you know, that's your choice. You just have to know when you're drinking it to know how long it's going to last, right? And some people are much more sensitive to caffeine than others. Um, and if you're extra sensitive, you know, it might, um, it might last longer. You might only need a little bit to have these kind of effects. And then also just to be aware that some over-the-counter pain relievers and cold medicines contain caffeine. Not all of them, but some do. So it's important to do a little research if you're taking any kind of pain relievers and cold meds and see if they have caffeine, because it might have the opposite of effect that you want it to. Uh, around sleep. Um, and then processed sugars, refined carbs, um, and the processed sugars are the sugars that are added to foods. They're, they're not natural sugars. They've been added. 
um, as well as saturated fats, all can cause poor sleep quality and make us um, wake more, have more nighttime awakenings because um, they're they're heavier foods and they um, you know can rev up the body. Um, similarly, spicy foods are a stimulant. And not everyone, as I said, everyone's different. Not everyone's impacted by spicy foods. And spicy foods on their, uh, by themselves uh, have a lot of health benefits. Um, but just know if you're sensitive to it, you're eating spicy food late at night and then going to bed, it might keep you up, right? Um, so to have it earlier in the day. And then um, lastly, while alcohol can make you sleepy, right? It also causes sleep disruptions and causes decrease in sleep quality because it messes with our REM cycles and our kidney functioning, right? So we're both having less uh, quality sleep in general, and we're having to get up more often to go to the bathroom, right? Because it's, um, yeah, it's a um, diuretic. So it's helpful to avoid alcohol, especially in general, right? There's, especially when we think about gut bacteria, there's really no nothing good about alcohol for the gut, like, nothing. Um, but if you are drinking alcohol, um, it's best to have it at least four to six hours before bedtime, right? Um, especially if you're having trouble sleeping. Here are some foods that can promote sleep. In general, any kind of whole food and whole food meaning nothing added, like the food in it of itself, like a fruit or a vegetable or rice or beans are going to be helpful for sleep. Um, but there's some certain foods that have been known to uh, promote sleep even in even uh, greater, yeah, even more. Um, some of them uh, like, let's say walnuts and some seeds like flax seeds, sesame seeds, um, as well as fish like salmon has omega-3 fatty acids. And those are linked to sleep quality because they boost the sleep promoting effects of melatonin which is a sleep hormone that we naturally produce in the body. Um, increasing protein intake has also been linked with less difficulty following, falling asleep and um, more restorative sleep. And so having good quality protein for dinner throughout the day, but particularly for dinner can be really helpful and pairing it with a complex carb, um, something like a sweet potato or a whole grain bread or rice um, that can help increase uh, tryptophan and serotonin production. And you may have heard of tryptophan in Turkey, um, but it's also in, um, in other foods as well. And that can help us get good quality sleep. Some folks um, really like having kiwi or even yogurts, yogurt and eggs um, because of the vitamin D can help us uh, sleep better. And then I mentioned salmon, but in general, fatty fish um, like salmon, tuna, mackerel, and sardines uh, can be really helpful too for getting good quality sleep. And if you are someone who eats fish, try to get uh, wild fish if possible because um, farmed fish has a lot of toxins in it. Um, and then other seeds, I mentioned flax seeds, also pumpkin seeds, almonds, peanuts, they all contain, um, or many of them contain melatonin and magnesium helpful for sleep. Heart healthy fats like extra virgin olive oil, um, avocado, avocados and coconut also um, are helpful. And then some herbs, I'm a big herb fan. I like like fresh herbs like basil and sage and oregano, parsley, whatever your, your uh, preference is, many, most of those can help as well. And then lastly, you may, um, what might come to mind is tea, right? Like chamomile tea, um, some have valerian root that uh, can induce um, a sense of, of calm on the body and help us feel sleepy, even like a ginger, peppermint, lemon balm, having tea before bed. And then the others on here, um, yeah, dark leafy greens like collards, cherries, dates, garlic, bananas. Um, yeah, all of these foods. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to pop them in the chat as we're going along or any, anything to share. If you know of other foods that help you sleep, feel free to pop those in the chat. All right, so there's some specific, some, some foods, right? They suggested that can be helpful to eat or avoid. And some other tips I wanted to share too, um, to help you get better sleep. Um, 
the body loves consistency with eating and sleeping, right? Um, we're creatures of, of routine and habit. So maintaining a sleeping and eating schedule is really beneficial for the body as much as possible. Your digestion also has a bedtime. I completely understand that we have a lot going on in our lives. We can't always go to sleep at the same time. We can't always eat at the same time, right? Um, but as much as possible to, to try and have um, routine with eating and sleeping um, helps the body to, um, to sleep and to digest both. So um, if you're able to eat around three hours before sleep, that can be helpful too. It allows your body to fully digest before lying down. Um, yes, yeah, sitting upright helps digestion, right? When we lay down, it um, slows, things, slows things down. Um, when we eat too close to bedtime, it burdens the body with uh, digestion absorption when we're supposed to be recuperating and repairing. Um, and it might keep you up and lead to restless sleep. And this is something to experiment with. And maybe you don't have any problem eating an hour or 30 minutes before you sleep, um, but maybe you do. And maybe it's something to experiment with if it's possible to eat a little bit earlier before going to bed. And if you are, it is important though to not go to bed hungry. So if you get home really late from a meeting or something like that, it's like 10 o'clock and you're gonna go to bed, it is important to eat something if you are hungry because if you are hungry, you're also not going to be able to sleep, right? So if you're craving a late night snack, there are some foods that can help boost um, melatonin levels. Some of the foods I mentioned on the, um, the prior screen there, right? Um, you know, the kiwi, tart cherries, or a snack that's high in fiber, complex carbs, right? Like I have something like nuts, um, nuts in a piece of toast or, or something like that um, can help with restorative sleep. And then one more tip I wanted to share, and then I will uh, turn it over to Olga for some stretches and some breathing. Um, another uh, tip is to cut all fluids around two hours before bed, if possible, right? Um, many of us get up to, to go to the bathroom during the night, right? And this can be reduced by cutting the fluids that we're drinking, you know, a couple hours before bed, if possible. Again, you don't want to go to bed if you're like super thirsty, right? And it's important to drink plenty of water during the day, right? And not save it for the evening. Um, and this, this can help. And again, it's something to experiment with. There's no hard and fast rule for how much uh, water to drink because everyone's body is different. And we live in different climates and we have different activity levels and all these things. But um, I'd say aim for your urine to be clear throughout the day. Then you know you're drinking enough water for your body. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Olga, talk about sleep as a priority. Oh, you're muted, Olga. I muted myself, here I am. <laughs> We've been talking about all uh, the many foods that can help or make sleep less, uh, less easy. There's a, a piece about screen time before sleep that um, Allison and I like to touch on. The, one of the biggest things about the, the rest and the digest piece is that they're part of the parasympathetic nervous system. So when we get into the biology and the anatomy, we've got the part of us that reacts to stresses, that's in fight and flight mode, and that part that is winding down and moving into rest, which is connected to the function of, of your intestines. So when you're at a screen, if you're doing work, if you're replying to emails, you're thinking about things, your body's in day mode. You've got the lights coming into the eyes. You're telling all the parts of your, your brain that it's daytime and there isn't that winding down period. So the recommendation is to also wind down that influence of light to the eyes to go into more of a, a nighttime mode going um certainly off screen is the the best recommendation that can be reading a paper book that could be taking a walk um but it also includes making more of a story time it's okay to watch maybe a movie where you can still bob around and you're not focused in one direction or you might watch a uh, a concert or a a theater thing on TV that's in kind of a story mode to help shift down into that resting place. So it's a little bit about screens. Um, and you might also have known and heard and, and could add to the chat if you wish two things that are considered sleep hygiene. So not just 
um, these things, but also doing avoiding non-sleep related activities in bed, not working in bed, not spending lots of time reading in bed, all the things that are um, stirring are kept in other rooms of the, of the home. It's also about getting adequate sunlight and exercise, reducing stress in all the ways, keeping that body in that, away from that fight and flight, more into that rest and digest mode of being throughout the day, not just for the few hours at night. And that's a whole nother workshop and, and conversation about why is it that we've consolidated our sleep into this eight hour event once, once at the clock, once every 24 hours, when we have some historical information that people before electricity had different patterns in their sleep. They might've slept earlier in the evening when the sun first went down, they might've had a, a wakeful time at night and then gone back to sleep. But we have uh, the lives we have now, and most of us expect to get our full rest in that moment, but we can reduce our stress throughout the day, right? We can still touch upon rest with naps, with, um, pleasant things. And some of those things are stretches, which is what we're going to do now. And if Ali, if you are willing to maybe stop sharing the screen, we can bring a little bigger demonstration here to the front line. And I don't know if I have the capacity or whether our host is willing or able to spotlight my picture, if that's helpful, or maybe just this is big enough. I can do that. Yeah. And Olga, I just wanted to share too, or, or lift up, um, but someone shared in the chat, they have a gratitude journal before sleep. I love that. Love that. Thank Beautiful. you. Thanks for noticing that. Absolutely. Helps wind down the mind, shifts your whole chemistry to, to be in gratitude, to dwell in gratitude and, and to make that something that helps the ritual of getting to sleep. I'm going to show you a few simple stretches. There's lots of ways to do them. If you are sitting, you can stay seated. seated if you're on a couch or on a bed or on a chair. You might want to be on the edge of it. And if it's a really soft chair, that might be tricky for you, but we're going to do stuff with the upper body. If you feel like standing up, if standing is your place, come on up to your feet. Lots of different options to do this. And if you're lying down, you can do it that way too. Maybe you're already lying down on a couch or maybe you're in bed. We are going to lift the arms places. So if you just be careful of, you know, moving too quickly about running into things, but you can do them in any of the positions available. And the first one's going to be a lengthening of the body. So if you're standing, you might bring your hands together, flip them over and reach up and make yourself as tall as you can be. And you're thinking about making space, space between the hips and the ribs from that sitting position. Same thing. The arms can go up as far as you're comfortable. And you're like a puppet. There's like a string that lifts you up through the spine, through the crown of your head. On the inhale, especially breathing in tall. And then if you want, you can... Exhale into your soft and slack position and inhale. Find that tallness wherever you are. Maybe you're lying down and just reaching in up above you and letting that go. So that's the first one. And, and the, one of its benefits for digestion is that it helps the esophagus. After we put things in our mouths, they travel down that tunnel to the stomach. And this helps make more space, gives the stomach a little room to catch that food. If you're standing, stand wider. And if you're sitting, do that too. Let your legs be a little wider so you're steadier. We're gonna go into some side bends. The arms can just hang out. They can just go along for the ride. You can just tilt over a little to one side and then to the other side. So if you're sitting, your arms might be there for balance. You might even balance them on the couch if you've got the, the, the edges by you. If you're standing, the arms can just float on down towards the knee and not very deep, right? If you go deep, 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 that becomes a forward bend. And here you're just trying to keep the side of the body and we're aiming towards the parts between the waist and the ribs. And every little movement, you're opening there and we are working so much of the digestive system here. The, the large intestine has an upward space here. It goes across the midline and then down the left. So as you crunch and open the sides of your body, you're helping move along the content of the large intestine. We're reminding those muscles that they've got a good job to do. We're helping get some fresh oxygen, fresh nutrients on your, on your circulation there to these parts. And then you come back to the middle, you come back to center and you rest. And taking a little break here to notice how you feel so far, wherever you are, if you're standing or sitting or lying down, 
you come into stillness and you check in with yourself. We did two things. We got tall and long, and then we did side to side, and you're seeing if you can feel that effect, that difference. And we'll do one more. That's a twist from the standing position. If you want to, you can make yourself big and wide and tall. Same from the sitting, just like you're uh, hugging the world here to begin with. And then you let the arms wrap around the body. One goes behind somewhere. The other one goes to the opposite shoulder. You might be turning a look over there behind. Coming back to the front to breathe in and then going the other way. So taking a couple moments to twist to the sides, left and right. And twist especially. Twists especially are going to affect this mid-side, midsection of the body. It's the muscles that are just in front of the guts that let us twist. So as you're twisting to the left and to the right, the organs of digestion are getting a direct intervention here. Some exercise is coming their way. I'm doing it slowly, it's evening time. I did eat before our session, but some people like to go real fast on this one. So if you're feeling more energy, you can dial it up to make it dynamic. If you're feeling less energy, you can honor whatever you're feeling and needing today. So those are a few standing ones. There's a, a few more that you can do also from a chair or from a standing or lying down position. I'm gonna show you three more movements that are about strengthening this part of the body. And one of them is giving the knee a hug. So if you are sitting, you can scoop it up and bring it in here. If you're standing, watch out for balance. You might need to hold on for something, to something to get that knee moving up. And off, of course, sitting down or lying down, you might know these movements. You might be trying them wherever you are right now. There's a way to hug the knee, giving it a hug two or three times, and then letting it rest. Whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. And if you are feeling ambitious, if you are feeling the energy, both together is going to be a bigger job. You can't do it standing up, right? You, that would be jumping up in the air. But you can try to do it from the sitting position can be a lot more challenging. You'll notice that you need a lot of strength to do that. So sticking to one leg at a time to get it going, get it started. And then we're gonna turn that into either an air bicycle or an air paddle, paddle boat. So if you're on the chair, if you're on a couch, if you're on the edge of the bed, it's like you've got one side of a paddle boat and you begin to, to paddle along. And you might feel who's working. You might need a rest. You might do two or three of those and say, oh, that's plenty for today. If you're really ambitious, you have the energy to be standing, you might try that like a bicycle. You'll do a few in one direction and then you'll change the direction. You, whatever you do on one side, you'll do on the other side. You might be standing, you might also be lying down, right? If you've chosen to be on the ground and that that's comfortable for you, got a bicycle up in the air. One leg at a time, one leg at a time, one direction, two directions, and an option of both together. If you've got that energy, if you've got that ambition to train your body in that way, and we'll finish it up with one more twisty position. I'm starting here from the sitting positions because they are often more gentle for the body. If you are sitting, walk both legs to one direction, and then turn to face the opposite way. So you're getting a little bit more of a diagonal position there. So that's walking the feet over and then turning to the opposite way. That's the sitting variation of a floor twist. If you are on the floor, you'd be bringing both knees to the same side and letting that move to one side and the other. And if you are standing for these practices, you might come into a, a little longer hold, a little more 
sustained variation of a standing twist. So we did all kinds of things this just now. We started with those big long stretches for the, for the spine to make space for the, the department where we keep our digestive organs. And then I showed you a few strengthening things, a few core engaging movements, moving the legs to bring more resources and more activity to this department here that has our, our digestive organs. We're gonna continue with a breathing practice. And then I'm so excited to share a third and final practice before we uh, chat a little bit more. Uh, the third one that's coming after the breath work is, um, some people call it a meditation, but it's less work than that. If anything, it's a meditation on rest itself. It is about being comfortable and letting the mind just float around. You don't have to do anything special. Uh, besides listen. So I'm glad you're here that you're listening. And as soon as, uh, <laughs> as soon as we're ready, we'll get there for now. I invite you to notice how you're feeling from those movements and to connect to your breath. What is the breath doing right now? We're going to start with a practice called natural breath awareness. So just watching the breath, just giving the breath its full permission to show up in the way that it's showing up in this moment. And you might need to move your body around for that, right? You might need to find a more comfortable place. Maybe you were at the edge of your chair for those stretches and you're settling back in, leaning back. Maybe you've warmed up and need to take off a layer or unbutton a little sweatshirt there. Or maybe you've got the opposite. Maybe you're feeling cooler and are noticing that if you're gonna be still and you're invited to come into a restful stillness now that you might need a blanket or a pillow or something. So tending to your comfort and turning to the breath. You'll be watching the breath. We begin with this attempt to just watch, to just be a witness to the breaths, to kind of get this before reading. We're gonna do something with the breath. We'll play a little breathing game, if you will. And then so you can check back in just a moment to see if how you feel after the practice is different than what you feel now. So maybe collecting a, a, a description for yourself. Maybe if there's a word that might describe your breath. Noticing how fast it's going, how, how deep or shallow it might be. Noticing where you feel the breath. Is it at the edges of the nose? Is it on the lips? Is it somewhere in the throat or the chest or the belly? Where do you notice the breath? And one of the magic ways in which the breath helps the body is that with every inhale, with every breath in, your abdomen is getting a massage. So connect with that muscle, it's the muscle between the, the ribs and the stomach that's called the diaphragm, this muscle that presses down when we breathe in. On the inhale, it makes the belly grow big. And on the exhale, the belly gets small and the air leaves the body effortlessly, letting the exhales be effortless. There's nothing you need to do as you invite a little deeper inhale. We are gonna work with the abdominal breath in the next few minutes. Some people like to put an, a, a hand over the abdomen. Some people like to feel that movement of the breath. Some people are comfortable with the arms anywhere else. You can't do this wrong, wherever you're comfortable. And as you start your next inhale, I invite you to take a partway inhale and stop for a little moment, like you're taking a little pause and then continue that same inhale. Maybe pausing once or twice more, you're building the breath with little interruptions. So that in those interruptions, you can find a way to get to those deeper parts of the belly. So you can find a way to get that inhale 
to inflate, to maximize the capacity there, low in the abdomen. The inhale is gonna stretch your belly, make it big. And then the exhale is just letting it go. And you might like that interruption. You might like that pause. That might help you make that breath longer. And if you are making a longer inhale, be sure to make a longer exhale. Take your time. Let that exhale be slow and long. And you might engage the stomach. You have the choice at the end of the exhale to pull in the muscles, those muscles that you were working by lifting those legs, pulling the belly button in towards the spine to get a full, even fuller, longer exhale, to extend the exhale a little bit. So give that a try. You might breathe in. Just a deep breath or those pauses if you like them. And then after the exhale is easy, then there's a little, oh, a little extra. I can get a little more out of this exhale. And if you're still playing along, do one or two more. And let that go. And checking in how you feel, checking in how that's changed your breath. How does the breath move now? As you turn back to watch the breath, as you turn your awareness again to that, that effortless breath. Notice what you notice there. And the next piece of our presentation is this Meditation on rest that I promised you a moment ago. So this is another good moment to, to wiggle a little bit. If you're needing to change your position, check in with your body. If you're sitting, you might wanna lie down. If you're standing, you might wanna sit down. If you were to be meditating on rest itself, I hope you would agree that a most comfortable position would be the correct position. And only you know where you are most comfortable. Some people are horizontal beings. Some of us like to be upright in a setup, meditation-like posture. So whatever your body likes to do, this is the moment to take a, a good internal inquiry. What is my favorite way to be? Is it curled up on the side? Is it flat out on the back somewhere? Do I like a pillow? maybe under the shoulders, maybe just under the head. The recommendation is to have the heels touching wherever you are to let the, the, the parts of the feet that are closest to the ground. So if you're on your side, it might be a, a side of the foot, but that some part of your foot is on the surface beneath you, whether that's a, a couch or a bed or a floor, that some, some part of you is grounded. That's the one recommendation. And then the rest of you finds its perfect place. You check where the arms wanna be, closer in, further out, where the legs like to be. And this practice that I'll share with you, we'll do a quick one. It'll be about 10 minutes today, but it can get quite involved and more complicated and they can also be customized. This is a practice that can be tailored to specific needs. Today, we're gonna to focus on rest and digest. And it especially works well for this since it is one of the number one practices to encourage that parasympathetic response, that rest and digest nervous system winding down opposite of the fight and flight. So getting the body super comfortable, noticing how that feels, noticing the breath. And all you need to do is listen. You are invited to close your eyes if it's safe to do that where you are. At the same time, the chat box is open. So if there's something that comes up for you, you're welcome to communicate with us. And your ears remain open. And that's, that's what's the connection here. My voice and your ears, and you can hear all the sounds around you. You've got the space, the sound of your space around you, and that'll keep you knowing that you're safe where you are, the sounds will remind you where you are. You might hear some familiar sounds, maybe 
sounds outside the windows, listening to distant sounds and the sounds in the room with you. Listening to the sounds. Closer and closer. My voice is among these sounds and you don't have to pay attention to what I'm saying. You can, it's all right if you do, but if you don't, the sound will be with you in the room and your mind is welcome to wander around as it explores this idea of rest, of rest, of comfort. And listening to what that might sound like in the body, listening for the sounds. Can you hear your own heartbeat? Can you hear, can you hear your digestion? Are there sounds in the belly as the body shifts into this restful state that you can hear maybe the occasional swallow. I'm listening for the breath. And letting the awareness come home, come home. Now take this moment to ask yourself a question and you have maybe the answer, but it might just be a question that stays as a question. And the question is, how do I wish to feel? And that might be about sleep. How do I wish to sleep? And that might be about the choices around food and meals and nourishment. How do I wish to digest? holding that question. And letting it go, and letting it go. And you might have answers coming up in your thoughts and you might not, they might come later. They might show up in a dream or in a surprise conversation unexpectedly. So we just plant these seeds, these seeds of how do I wish to feel? How do I wish to sleep? How do I wish my body to feel? And now we go on a short journey around the body. The awareness moves around. There's nothing that must be done. Letting the mind move from body part to body part, taking a moment to notice the, the hand, beginning at the right hand, thumb, and all the fingers there, the palm and the back of the hand. Noticing the forearm and the upper arm, up to the shoulder and down the armpit and ribs, down to the right waist there and the hip and the thigh, moving the awareness down and down to the knee and the lower leg, the ankle and heel and foot. Be aware of the right side of the body. And come on over to the left hand, thumb and the fingers, noticing the palm and the back of the hand there, forearm and upper arm, to the shoulder, armpit, down the side of the body to the hip and leg, thigh, knee, lower leg, ankle, heel and foot, left big toe, and all the toes and the whole left side of the body. Be aware, notice this shape, this form, the feet, the legs, the pelvis. Taking a moment to slow down with this awareness of the abdomen. Feeling the feelings of the belly, the organs of digestion there, large intestine, small intestine, up to the stomach, connected to the esophagus and up to the throat and mouth. Be aware of the chin and the cheeks, out to the ears, the sides of the head, the back of the head, back around to the mouth and the tongue in the mouth and the teeth, 
be aware of the nose with its nostrils, the bridge of the nose, the eyes, right and left, right and left eyebrow. Be aware of the forehead and the crown of the head together. Head, face, neck, shoulders, arms together, the chest and back, abdomen, pelvis and legs all together, all together, the whole body, the whole body, the whole body. Be aware of the whole body in this state of awareness. You have come to a place within yourself. The breath is here. The body is resting. And coming back to this question, how do I wish to feel? What would that feel like? Dreaming it forward. What? What would that look like to feel the way I wish to feel? What would sleep look like and feel like? What would be my experience with nourishment? How do I wish to feel? And you might stay right where you are. You might be in a very nice place. That's a fine idea. And you can always come back. This is your practice. And if you're feeling complete, if you're feeling ready to be more awake, to be moving on to something else, something new, we'll go very, very slowly. There is no rush. There is no hurry. So taking a moment to listen, again, listening to the inner noises, the the breath, the heartbeat, maybe digestion is making some sounds, listening inward. Listening all around, listening to this voice among the sounds and the sounds around you, the sounds of the room, the sounds outside. Listening to remember, remember where you are in this practice. You might be in your home or a friend's home or a a public space there, you might be remembering where you are. You don't have to open the eyes. If your eyes are still closed, you might just see the place with the closed eyes. We can do that. Some of us know exactly where we are and our bodies, we know the shape and the position. You don't have to open your eyes. You can feel and know exactly where you are, whether you're sitting or standing or lying down, you know exactly without opening the eyes where you are. And you might be ready to be more awake. You can deepen the breath and begin making movements with the fingers and the toes. You might do some of that abdominal breath again if that was something you enjoyed. Those sips of inhale, sips of inhale, building on the inhale to make as full, as inflated of a body as you can. Letting that out with an exhale. You might need to stretch. You might need to roll to the side. You might like to rub your hands together, warming them up. Sometimes I'll even blow like I'm cleaning a pair of glasses, <sighs> getting that moist, warm breath between my hands. <sighs> and then those warm hands can be put over the, the eyes. You can open the eyelids when they're sheltered. You can open the eyes in the darkness there of the palms. You might do that again and again. If you really like that, our eyes can get tired easily, especially if you've been at a computer and now you're, you're watching this, this thing here. So you might give your eyes a little darkness, a little warmth. And seeing how you feel. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for participating. As you are still here and as you're coming to a more wakeful state, you are encouraged to check in with us. Tell us how you're feeling. Perfect. Thank you. We can turn it to Allison. All right. Thank you so much, Olga. I feel so much more relaxed. I always do after your, your nidras. 
relaxation practices and and yeah, invite you all to, to to see how you feel, both in terms of your your um your digestion, you know, how does that feel different from before this practice to now after the stretching and the breathing exercises? Um, and in general, your heart rate, your your palms, maybe where they were sweaty before and they're not, or maybe your your hands were cold and maybe they're warm now, just to notice how you feel. Um, feel free to share in the chat any any noticings. Um, I like to do this, this practice is called Yoga Nidra, what Olga just um, led us through. And um, I love doing this before sleep. It really helps, um, or if I wake up in the middle of the night too and can't fall back to sleep, this is an amazing practice for getting back to sleep as well. Um, and there's lots of links, we can share some with you and you can find them on um, podcasts and on YouTube and there's links everywhere um, for, for Yoga Nidras. We'll share some of Olga's later. Um, and in a few, uh, the minutes that we have left together, um, we wanted to offer an invitation to you. Um, rest is really revolutionary, right? And and a form of resistance in our culture of productivity and the glorification of busyness, right? And our our um, productivity tied to our our value and worth, which is absolutely not. We are all uh, valuable and and um, worthy just the way we are, right? Just as, as beings. Um, but in our culture, it's revolutionary, right? So it's important to make the time to rest and to sleep as often as you can. So you have energy to do the things that matter to you, right? And even carving out those five minutes here and five minutes there, if that's what you can do is still uh, beneficial um, to, your, to your body and your health. So an invitation is um, to write down these questions um, or the answers to these questions. Um, what is it costing you to have poor sleep? If you are someone who struggles with um, quality, consistent sleep, what is it costing you? And I invite you to write it down because research shows when you write something down, it's more likely to, to come true, right? It's not just in our heads, it's actually out on, on paper. You're welcome to share in the chat if that's helpful for you too. And if you don't want to, this is just for you. Um, so what is it costing you to have poor sleep? And then what do you want instead? What would you like instead of poor sleep? And then the last question is, what's one thing you can do to sleep better? We've shared a, a number of, of ideas with you. Does something in particular resonate or something you wanna try um, in the coming days or weeks, maybe around foods, um, foods to add in your diet, foods to, to maybe not have right before bed or one of these stretching or breathing practices. So just, and starting with one, one small step, right? Like what's one thing you can do? And I'll, I'll be quiet for just a moment so you can think. All right. Now, pass it back to Olga. That's right. We promised you three keys. And the first one were um, some of the nutritional and dietary choices around um, sleep. The second key was a few practices, some of the stretches we did, the breath practice and the, the restful yoga nidra, as Allison um, named it correctly. I've been referring it to it as a meditation on rest, but it does have its own name. And the third key is that you don't do it alone. Get support. This is trying to make changes, right? Trying to break habits and live in a way that maybe isn't perfectly supported by the capitalist society around us, right? There are so many forces, as Ali mentioned at the beginning of the session, that work against us and to, that heighten our stress, that doing it alone can just be another stressor, another, another way to heighten that fight and flight response instead of soothing it down. So get support. This could be with a friend group, with a family member to be accountable to, to say, I'm trying to make these changes. And it could be working with a professional, like a, a health coach, joining a class to get additional insights and help. I teach a weekly class that is open to anybody. It's here on Zoom. And so you can come from anywhere on Mondays and Wednesdays. That is a stretching and breathing and yoga nidra class. So that's one way to get more of this. 
And I would be delighted to hear from you directly if anything I shared is inspiring to you and you would like to learn more. I do offer a free consultation for anybody who would like to get to know me better. Wonderful. And I also work with folks one on one um, and in groups um, around yeah, different with health and wellness um, in general and, and finding your, your balance, particularly around gut health, too. Um, I help folks um, you know, improve their gut health, which really improves, helps to improve the everything, um, mental health, immunity, everything. So I'm happy to talk with anyone, answer any questions at any point. Our, um, our contact information is here. And um, we would love to hear any questions or reflections you have, something that stood out for you. Um, if you do need to hop off, we want to thank you so much for being here tonight. And we hope you um, enjoyed this uh, this webinar and and found it and found it valuable and um, took away some um, there's some more more tools for your toolbox in terms of improving your both your sleep and your digestion. There's a question nice. that showed up in our Q and A. Do you see it, Allison, as well? I do. It's about sleep patches with herbs. That's a great question. Um, do you have thoughts on that, Olga? Sleep well, as a practitioner, I often have thoughts about products. And so I know there's a market full of all sorts of products, including sleep patches with herbs, but those could be herbal supplements. Those could be special pillows. There's all kinds of um, products out in the market because everyone needs sleep, right? So this is a pain for many people. And so people are going to try to sell you all kinds of things. With that said, if you happen to have found them in your life and have had a good experience, I believe your experience. If things are going well with for you with that, that is indisputable, but it's nothing, nothing that I personally, um, as a practitioner, I'm interested in practices that we can do, like small changes on the everyday to uh, of the regular kind of daily routine bits that can help improve the quality. <laughs> My bias here. How about you, Allison? Oh, well, well said, well said. Yeah, I think it's all about trying, trying out and experimenting and seeing what works for you, right? What other questions do, do folks have? Or anything that, that stood out for you, something you want to try to try to incorporate in your life. And if not, that is quite all right too. We'll let Sadia wrap us up here. Thank yeah, so I just much. want to thank you both so much. That was wonderful. I loved all the tips. And I love the, the, what is it, the Nindra yoga. And hopefully everyone will get a good restful sleep tonight after listening to this. And um, yeah, and floor is open if anyone has any more questions before we go. Great. Like you guys gave such a great presentation. Look at her. 859. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone have a good, restful, light sleep tonight. All right. <laughs> yeah, sleep well, everyone. Thank and you. stay curious, because if you did the practice, you might you might might indeed find that it's affecting your sleep. Some people find a deeper sleep. So be curious about that. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care.